Hi guys, welcome to this tutorial for Sonic Academy on how to use Reason 11. I first came into contact with Propellerheads, or now known as Reason Studios, uh, their software at uh, Rebirth, and then used Reason in the early days from version 1, and kind of haven't used it in a while, and really kind of got back into it uh, now with the new Reason Rack plugin, which is available for your DAW as a VST plugin. Uh, we're going to be focusing on that rack plugin for this tutorial. Uh, it is a very capable DAW in its own right. Uh, however, not much has changed uh, since version 10. So I will recommend if you are wanting to get into Reason as your primary DAW, uh, on Sonic Academy we have a full walkthrough for beginners on how to use it as a DAW, um, all the audio tracks, etc. For the scope of this tutorial though, um, the instruments on offer are quite vast, uh, so I wanted to focus on those more. So we're going to be working entirely in the rack, uh, looking at effects, uh, instruments and some of the new player modules as well. Um, this is going to have quite a bit for beginners as well, we're, we're going to kind of just start off with some of the basics uh, and then move into a lot more complex stuff looking at um, some modular synths, uh, some of the other synths that are on offer as well as some of the MIDI effects and some advanced effects routing. Uh, a bit of a background on how synthesizers work will be beneficial. Uh, we will get a little bit more advanced as we get into the sort of deep dives into the synths. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at Europa, the grain sample manipulator, complex modular synth, and Parsec, the additive synth for reason, as well as all of the MIDI players uh, in detail, and then uh, some basics on drum pro programming inside of reason. Uh, I am also taking a look at Reason Suite. Uh, we'll cover a lot of the stuff in the Reason Standard version as well, uh, but one or two of the uh, effects plugins and synths, uh, like the Complex and Parsec synths, uh, are included in Reason Suite. Um, but you can also demo those from the Reason Shop if you have the standard version. Uh, so you can go check those out. Great, uh, let's get started. I'm going to catch you guys in the next video. We'll jump into the basics. I'll see you then. Cheers. Right, welcome guys. Uh, here we have the Reason Rack plugin running in Cubase. As I said, we're going to be focusing on the rack only and using that to create sounds, do sound design, write melodies, etc. Uh, while it is a perfectly functional DAW, I don't want to be focusing on that. For me personally, it doesn't have all that much uh, to offer as far as the DAW is concerned. I've got no reason to be outside of Cubase for the most part. Um, but as a rack, uh, it really brings that magic uh, from reason into your DAW and just kind of really inspires a lot of creativity. Uh, so to kick things off, um, for Reason users this might be rehashing some stuff, but if you are new to Reason I want to just kind of run over a few um, basics on operating this and a couple of settings and things that you should know about this. Uh, there are a few limitations to the plugin. Um, one, the sample editor is not functional inside of this. They kind of expect you to use the sample editor or uh, trim samples inside of your DAW. Uh, it is fully drag and drop capable though, so you, once you do that inside of Cubase or Ableton, you can drop them into any of the sample players or uh, what have you. The other limitation is that the VST module uh, that's available in the DAW version of this is not available in the plugin. Uh, which is a shame, I'm guessing, due to technical limitations because you can't load external instruments into this. Only the Reason instruments are available. But for the most part, that's not going to be a problem for us. Uh, so before we get started, uh, let's just check out the settings page up the top here. I'd suggest that you just enable these top three ones. It just kind of speeds up workflow a little bit for me. Um, open with browser shown. I guarantee at some point you're going to need the browser, so I just have that open by default. Uh, new devices get browser focus. That's a nice thing to have turned on as well. I'll tell you why in just a sec. As well as the load default sound into new dev devices. Um, I actually prefer to have the devices zeroed or reset completely. Um, this, however, allows you to just set the default browsing location when you load a sound, which is nice. You don't have to go browsing for it manually afterwards. Okay, so those are set up so we can get out of that. Um, just the very basics to load instruments, you can look in your instrument section here, you have your browser on the left hand side, effects, utilities, players, 
and then your sound banks they're all in the same browser uh, you can access your pc as well from there as well as a favorites tab you can add your own favorite lists and drag in presets uh, into your own lists to kind of organize them the sounds bank is kind of a collection of everything together uh, so you can very quickly access sort of across the board uh, you'll see uh, you have different patches from different instruments they all kind of group together if you look at the factory sounds you can actually grab the factory uh, presets for a specific module uh, that you want or for a specific instrument we can just quickly grab a preset uh, let's go to the pads. Uh, before we do this as well, um, quite often I use this for sort of layering sounds. Uh, it's good practice to, before you start um, dragging in presets uh, to just add a mixer. Uh, this won't always be the case, but for the most part, I like to just drop one of these in. Um, I do this because if you drop in the instruments now, they will send directly to the individual outs and you will have to mix then according to each of the patches. I like having an overall mixer so when I'm layering sounds I can easily adjust the volume and uh, basic EQ etc. So just load one of those in, uh, you can even minimize that for now. To load a preset, uh, as I said to load an instrument you can just double click and drag one of those in. Um, but we're going to load a preset instead and just quickly look at how quickly and easily it is to layer up some sounds. I'm going to grab a pad first. Let's just um, just double click on any one of these and this will load in a combinator patch seeing as that is a combo preset uh, we can play that back now um, I want you to just take note of the preset browsing section here it's currently highlighted in orange that means that this module has focus um, and you'll see at the top here it says browsing patches for ambient fox pad which is the current preset that we have loaded if you click off anywhere uh, you'll see that you lose focus and then if you select another preset it's going to add a new module on top of that um, to get focus back on that one again we can just click on the browse patch and we'll go back to where that, browse, that patch came from initially um, now in the plugin mode you can double click to load patches if you use your down and up arrows you can actually just scale through them and it'll auto load them And once you're happy, you can just stop there. Um, and let's just lose focus for that again now. And I'm gonna just show you something else. We'll just pop down here to look for another uh, preset. Let's take B strings, uh, for example. Since we have lost the focus now, if we double click, we'll see we have a new uh, instrument added. And now we have a layered sound. So now you can see why I said insert the mixer in the beginning. Um, for the most part, these will automatically patch. Now this is the main thing that you have to remember with reason. The tab button will send you to the back panel of the rack. And this you can do all sorts of uh, really interesting stuff with. Um, notice that you have big jacks and mini jacks. The mini jacks are control voltage inputs and outputs. Uh, so these are going to be how you route control around. Um, you can sync up control from drum sequences to pretty much anything um, there's a lot you can do with uh, linking things together with control voltages like this and then obviously you have the audio connections so you'll notice here without actually doing any patching um, by inserting the mixer it's actually done everything automatically for me if at any point something's not patched in you can right click and uh, you'll have a number of options here you do have the auto root device it doesn't always get it 100 percent right though um, but that is there as an option um, when you are disconnecting or connecting things um, it's good practice just to always grab the left uh, signal when you are working with a stereo connection by doing so it'll actually disconnect both at the same time and connecting the left to left it'll connect both at the same time as well if you take out the right you'll see it won't actually move both at the same time so just always remember left to left and that'll auto patch everything else
Now, with regards to patching as well, if you are wanting to start working with effects, etc., so we can come over to the effects, and these load up the same way. You can drag these in, double click or whatever. Double click will just put them to the bottom of your rack. Uh, if you want to say, for instance, insert a scream distortion on this module here, dragging it into this module will automatically patch it onto that. And you can see it's done that left uh, and right outputs to the input of the distortion, output of the distortion to the mixer. Uh, we've got an undo function here as well. You'll see if we do that again, and we can apply that to the mixer, for example. I've actually put that above now. Um, what it's done is taken the input, uh, which is not what we want. I should have dragged that to the, the section here. And you'll see now um, the mixer will default to assigning it to send. Uh, so in this case, you will have to manually patch it uh, to add a distortion as an insert to this one. Um, but these sends are handy when you want to insert something like a reverb, for example. It will automatically patch that to the sends on the mixer. So that uh, pretty much covers uh, the basics that I wanted to look at. Um, this will kind of get you through uh, basic operation. Uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you do, then uh, it really is a very flexible um, space to work in uh, once you are used to the controls. So let's cut this video here. And we're going to take a look at three different ways of actually setting this up in your projects. Now, I'll catch you in the next video. I'll see you then. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.